most often when people think of the Nazis, a masculine picture comes to mind. However, there were enough complicit women in the Third Reich, some of whom went on to perpetrate crimes in concentration camps. Irma Gress, a guard better known as the Beautiful Beast or the Hyena of Auschwitz, was one of the most infamous. Millions of captives detained in the thousands of concentration camps throughout the Nazi government were terrorized by SS guards. Joseph Kramer, Rudolf Hoess, and Theodor Eich were a few names that have been associated with such crimes. Nevertheless, the names Irma Grace, Maria Mandl, and Dorothea Binz, among many others, inspired in the female captive housed in camps like Auschwitz, Bergen-Belsen, and Ravensbrück as much terror and panic as those of the SS men, if not more. Gris was one of five children born in the tiny German town of Wirchen in 1923. When Gris was barely 13 years old, her mother hanged herself after learning that her husband was having an affair. She was therefore solely raised by her fervent Christian father, Alfred Grace, who was uh, quite tough and demanding with his kids and frequently used physical force to discipline them. One of Grace's sisters reported that Gress was being bullied in school and finally dropped out of school, and Irma struggled academically and left school at the age of 14. She subsequently relocated to Lucan and worked in a retail store there for a further six months after spending six months on a farm doing agricultural work. Gris encountered the Hohenleit Consanatorium in 1939 when she was 15 years old. There, for about two years, she worked as a nursing assistant and was trained by the sanatorium's medical superintendent, Karl Gebhardt, a Nazi physician who would later conduct medical experiments on prisoners of the Ravensbrück concentration camp during the Second World War. Gress aspired to work as a full-time nurse at the Hohenleiken Sanatorium, but in 1941, when she was just 17 years old, she was sent to a diary farm in Frostenburg, where she ran a butter machine due to her poor scholastic performance. At the age of 19, she became enticed by Hitler's deranged ideology and consented to work as a guard at the Ravensbrück concentration camp, which only housed female prisoners. Gress, according to Professor Wendy Sarti, frequently struck women in the breasts, a particular favorite of hers. And she made young Jewish detainees serve as lookouts while she assaulted other prisoners. She grew accustomed to using her jackboots, rods, truncheons, and a whip made of cellophane to beat and kick captives, often to the point of death. She was sent to Auschwitz the next year, in 1943, and was raised to the second highest rank that a female SS officer could have. Irma's sister, Helen, claims that back when Irma was a young child, she was afraid to defend herself and would flee from confrontations. At Auschwitz, though, Gris discovered that she could strike people without the fear of retaliation for the very first time, which she enjoyed. Gris earned the infamous nickname the Hyena of Auschwitz and the Beautiful Beast as a result of her violence and cruelty which led her to being one of the most despised and feared guards in the camp. The complex of Auschwitz had more than 40 camps and subcamps, with Birkenau being the largest. Ten parts were separated from one another by electric barbed wire barriers. Guards from the SS, including SS dog handlers after 1942, guarded the area. It served a variety of purposes during the course of its three years in operation. It was intended to be a camp for 125 prisoners of war when construction was underway in October of 1941. In addition to functioning as a branch of Auschwitz, it also included a center for the execution of Jews when it was opened in March 1942. In its latter stage, starting in 1944, it also served as a holding facility for prisoners before they were sent to work in German industry during the height of the Third Reich. The brilliant Nazi propagandists disseminated their ideas using cutting-edge technology and clever advertising strategies. In order to expose kids and teenagers to Nazi philosophy and policies, the Nazi party created the Hitler Youth and League of German Girls. The young people of Germany were also war-readied by these youth organizations. However, it was hard to escape being indoctrinated by the Nazis given their vital role that schools played in exposing the German youth to these ideologies. Irma's father never let his children join the Nazi youth organizations, despite their desire to do so, since he didn't sympathize with the Nazis and abhorred everything connected to them. The relationship between her and her father Alfred soon deteriorated in the future, as he continued to strongly oppose her joining the SS. German youngsters, like Irma Grace, were presented with the Adolf Hitler cult from the very first days that they were in school. His picture was a staple in every single classroom. German educators created new textbooks and taught pupils to revere Hitler, submit to state authority and practice militarism, racism, and anti-Semitism, while censors deleted several works from the classroom. A total of 132,000 women, including Poles, Russians, Jews, Gypsies, and others, came from all across Europe and went to the camp. Over 92,000 of them were women. There were 150 women working as supervisors in the Ravensbrück camp in addition to the SS men who guarded and ran it. 
These female managers were either SS volunteers or employees who accepted the position because of the favorable compensation and working circumstances. The sadistically brutal German Nazi commander and supervisor Dorothea Binz ran the training facility at Ravensbrück for female SS guards, instructing her students on how to treat the prisoners that they would be in charge of. These convicts would have to labor until they died, and it was the responsibility of their managers, like Irma Grace, to squeeze the absolute most work out of them while they were still breathing. As a result, around 3,500 female guards who later served in Ravensbrück or other concentration camps received their training there serving as a school of violence in the progress. SS physicians began conducting unethical medical tests on Ravensbrück detainees over the summer of 1942. Karl Gebhardt served as the primary experiment organizer, while Fritz Fischer and Hertha Oberhauser, both physicians, served as Gebhardt's assistants. In order to avoid infections, they frequently used a hammer to break the legs of female inmates. They then treated open wounds with aggressive bacteria and observed the healing process both with and without various chemicals such as the early antibiotic sulfanilamide. They also experimented with different techniques for establishing and transplanting bones because they thought it might aid in the treatment of amputee soldiers. Amputations were a common part of these studies, which were frequently carried out without anesthesia. For these examinations, the SS chose roughly 80 women, the majority of whom were Polish. As a result, several of these ladies passed away. Those who lived frequently experienced bodily harm that was irreversible. In an effort to perfect an effective sterilization technique, SS physicians also conducted sterilization tests on women and children, many of whom were Roma. Additionally, they carried out forced abortions on pregnant women who might have reached seven to eight months long. Along with these forced abortions, they were further notorious for beating expectant mothers to induce miscarriages and slaying babies. Irma Gris was acquainted with Karl Gebhardt through the Hohenleichen Sanatorium, and it was assumed that Gris, who was 18 at the time, worked as an assistant nurse at Ravensbrück during the experiments and was exposed to the horrors that could have negatively impacted her personality and turned her into a violent sadist. Olga Lengiel, an Auschwitz survivor, claimed in her autobiography Five Chimneys that Gris had several relationships with various Nazis, including Mengel. Lengiel noticed that Irma Gris often purposefully chose attractive female captives for the gas chamber out of jealousy and hate. Grace was also a sexual deviant who had affairs with both Brekenu's male and female residents. In fact, she was said to have had relations with Josef Mengel, the notorious doctor, and Josef Kramer, the commander of Auschwitz-Birkenau and later Bergen-Belsen. According to the Jewish Virtual Library, Grace had lampshades produced from the skin of three deceased prisoners discovered in her residence, much like her female Nazi colleague Eil Koch was alleged to have done. However, when the Allies began to lessen the Nazis' grip on Europe, Grace switched from taking lives to trying to rescue her own. She was detained by the British in the early months of 1945, and after being charged with war crimes along with 45 other Nazis, Grace was released. Grace entered a not guilty plea, but the evidence presented by witnesses and Grace's psychotic survivors led to her conviction and to her death sentence. In 1945, Irma Grace was executed on December 13th, Gress, who was just 22 years old, holds the title of being the 20th century's youngest woman to be hanged in Britain. Yeah, cool title. So, Arma Gress was not mourned with tears, considering the mention of how many people that she inflicted horror to, for lack of better words. So, what are your opinions on this beauty who turned out to be a beast 